So very good day to everybody present here. Once again, we are back with the introduction to computer systems. So I think in the last class, uh, we actually dealt with the uh, introduction to computer, you know, evolution of computers. Uh, today's class, uh, we'll first of all deal with uh, the classification, classification of computers and application of computers and then we will go to the remaining topics. So before beginning uh, today's session, first of all, let me thank God for giving me this golden opportunity to deliver this uh, session, a very useful session, to share my knowledge among my fellow national and international participants. So, <laughs> we are going to start, start with, with the classification of computers. computers. Uh, can, can you hear my voice? voice? Is my voice starting? Okay, 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 good. So, so, with the case, case of uh, computers, we normally categorize or maybe we normally classify computers as two types as analog computer and then a digital computer. So, with the case of analog computer, actually, we are going to recognize the data or maybe the information uh, with regards to properties, for example, like uh, maybe voltage or maybe speed or maybe pressure or maybe temperature. Okay, so what you are going to do, you are going to get the readings on a dial or maybe as a graph you are going to get it at the output so like uh, maybe you can you are going to measure the speed or maybe you are going to measure the pressure or maybe you are going to measure the voltage or maybe temperature it can be measured in this way using analog computers but with the case of digital computers as you all know that it is a very high speed electronic device and it is a programmable device so you can do mathematical calculations at a very fast speed and you can compare the results like uh, okay this uh, particular digital uh, phenomena has obtained this much result and uh, project b has obtained this result so you are, you are going to compare with the uh, you know the bar chart or maybe the punch chart with the uh, software tools that are available and you can even sort the data in order okay like ascending order or maybe descending order and so on so the digital computer is going to accept the input and it is going to produce the output as a discrete signal. Okay. So based on the discrete signal that are obtained, you can uh, generally obtain the signal to be either high or maybe in odd state or maybe in low or maybe in the half state. Okay. So normally if you can see with the case of digital computer, as you know, computers understand machine level languages. Okay. Right? So you can generally include numbers or maybe alphabets or maybe symbols as a series of zeros and ones, binary zeros and ones. So digital computers you can further classify as uh, general purpose uh, digital computers and special purpose digital computers. With the case of general purpose uh, computers, uh, even with the case of uh, the account section in your university, maybe the payroll or maybe the data processing, you can use it for general purpose computers but in the case of special purpose computers it can be used in industry especially when you when you try to calibrate uh, any measurement in microwave uh, rf uh, radio uh, frequency section or maybe automobiles or maybe uh, huge uh, industries uh, you can go for special purpose especially uh, you use these computers for a specific purpose And once again, with the case of uh, small computers, you are going to go with the microcomputers. So, microcomputers you can normally classify it as PCs, okay, personal computers, or maybe personal digital assistant. So, the memory would be small, and uh, they are going to consume less power given, okay. And uh, they are widely used in day-to-day -day applications, for example, in the office automation, or maybe you know professional uh, applications even with the case of PCAT or maybe Pentium as well. Okay. So these are microcomputers which are normally handy in use in automation and uh, professional application scheme. So with the case of uh, notebook computers and maybe the laptop computers, they are suitable in nature, so it is uh, handy, very uh, easy to maintain as well 
and uh, they are battery operated. Okay. For example, in the case of storage devices like uh, maybe a series or maybe uh, floppy disks as well, and uh, maybe the output uh, devices like printers, they are connected to the computers. Okay. So notebook computers uh, generally uh, very small in size, like uh, like in the case of notebook, it's very small, very handy in use than a laptop computer. Uh, it is similar to your tab. Okay. Right. So however, both have powerful processors. They support uh, graphics as well, and uh, it can accept uh, mouse-driven input as well. <laughs> So in the case of classification of computers, we have like a, a microcomputer, what uh, we discussed over here. This is a microcomputer and this is a notebook or a laptop, okay. And then you have a handheld computer. So this is uh, similar to your tab, okay, right. So these are the various uh, classification of computers. Once again, with the case of uh, classification of computers, we have the handheld computers. So, mainly used in uh, collection of field data. Uh, for example, if you are going to go for any civil engineering project, then you can you know, collect the data and you can analyze the data accordingly. With the case of economics or maybe accountancy, you can do so. Okay. They are even smaller than the notebook uh, computers. Very handy in use, just uh, with a palm, you can just hold it, okay. and. Um, you can also classify the computers as a hybrid computer even. So, uh, hybrid computers, you can uh, categorize it as a combination of a analog computer and digital computer. So, uh, with regards to the speed of an analog computer and with regards to the speed of the digital computer, it combines uh, uh, the speed of both the analog and digital computer and you can uh, get the same accurate uh, uh, result as well with the case of a hybrid computer. So, they are mostly used in specialized applications where uh, input data is in the analog form. For example, if you are going for any measurements, you are going to go for any analysis. Okay. So, you can use this hybrid computer. Once again, uh, this analog part is converted to the digital part and you are going to get the output in the uh, output devices. And then we have a mini computer. So, uh, more than a micro computer, a mini computer is more powerful. So the memory capacity is very much high, like uh, in the earlier cases uh, the memory capacity was low, but in the mini computer the memory capacity is high and more storage capacity even, okay, right. So that is uh, a much uh, higher speed, more storage capacity and more memory capacity even, okay. So normally uh, in payroll, so maybe the accounting section or maybe the, maybe the financial accounting or maybe in CAD, computer aided design. Uh, in the case of WAX or maybe PDP 11, you can uh, use this uh, uh, mini computers. <coughs> Next, you go for a mainframe computer. Actually, it's a very large computer. Uh, it's going to process at a very uh, larger speed, like uh, maybe within seconds, you are going to process several million instructions. And uh, they are also uh, connected to a microcomputer even. Uh, even in the case of large industries or maybe organizations, in the case of government departments as well, you can use as mainframe computers. <coughs> and one such example is uh, IBM, okay, IBM 4381 or maybe CDC. Okay. So, uh, 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 an extended version or maybe an enhanced version of a, a mainframe computer is a supercomputer. So, supercomputer is very fast, it's more powerful. It's not bulkier, it's not bulkier and the size is very less, okay, and most expensive because in order to uh, process complex tasks, you use a supercomputer because uh, in a supercomputer, you have like uh, multiple processors that are involved, so you can process multiple instructions at the same time. So parallel processing is the advantage of supercomputers, uh, they are uh, used widely in advanced applications, for example, in weather forecasting, suppose uh, if you have to Focus a particular uh, weather in a particular day, then you can use uh, supercomputers in order to pro uh, process the geological data that are available. You can use supercomputers. So, multiple processors, parallel processing is an advantage of the supercomputers. So, in the case of example, we have like Cray 2, uh, NEC 500, and then Param uh, computers, uh, you can use uh, supercomputers. And then with the case of application of computers, you can use this uh, computers in uh, scientific uh, field, engineering and research field. 
so uh, with, uh, with the case of uh, several experiments several research works that is going on uh, in and around your university or maybe if you have to do a small mathematical uh, uh, application or maybe the calculation for example if you have to do the mathematical uh, calculation in your research project if you are going to go for weather forecasting or maybe uh, a mini project or maybe a larger project where you require engineering applications mathematical applications you have like a cad cam okay, computer in a design or computer made in manufacturing uh, maybe if you are going to design a robot then uh, you can use this computer okay right so even with the case of automatic process control devices even you can use the computer even with the case of business in order to maintain the reports or maybe a payroll invoice the bills accounts you can use this uh, this um, you know computers for a larger extent in order to maintain and uh, manage the uh, database uh, information in a large scale uh, in order to maintain uh, tickets uh, uh, railway ticket uh, train ticket or maybe airline reservations you can go for uh, usage of computers where large amount of data needs to be updated edited sorted searched from larger database for example if you are in a particular area then you can search for the nearby portals or the restaurants uh, you can go for uh, airline reservation uh, at your place at the need of the heart so you can see okay uh, which flights are available uh, what is the cost of the ticket price so you can uh, use it uh, for a large scale even with the case of medicine okay for example um, uh, if you are in a remote particular area and uh, uh, for example in this covid uh, situation uh, maybe if you uh, need uh, assistance from a particular doctor so the doctor can uh, sit in his or her own place and uh, he or she can monitor your pulse rate or your blood pressure or maybe the um, the temperature uh, of your heart okay so still with the modern tools uh, uh, that are available you can actually go with a faster and accurate diagnosis uh, with the help of the computers so the modern uh, day medical equipment are highly computerized today and uh, that's the reason uh, you are using the computers for a larger uh, medical research and in the case of information you are going to use it in television or in satellite communication internet networks you cannot imagine a life without internet okay so information uh, plays a vital role so you can use computers even even with the case of uh, education even uh, the students uh, tend to build a more logical ability so like a uh, storage of information in the case of a uh, series in the case of different uh, subjects you can uh, impart the education and online training like the uh, especially during the covid uh, days uh, you can use this uh, uh, online tools with the help of the computers encyclopedias you know wikipedias dictionaries books that are available in the digital form uh, maybe in the future uh, there might be a situation where uh, you need not have uh, physical libraries you will have digital libraries you might have access to the software tools that are available and uh, even with the case of creativity drawing or maybe painting even with the case of paint 3d or maybe photoshop or maybe animation tools uh, gaming software even with the case of designing decoration music even uh, it's been developed with the case of computers and in the case of uh, games and entertainment uh, computer games are more popular with the children and even in the adults too so you can uh, you know download movies you know you can get access to the uh, live telecast of the uh, uh, maybe the uh, football or maybe the basketball or maybe the cricket sessions uh, advertising uh, digital uh, marketing even you can use uh, games and entertainment in the help of the computers so we are going to go with the uh, advantages and disadvantages of computers uh, similarities and differences between a uh, human and a computer we are going to see the similarity and then we are going to see the differences between a human and a computer and then we are going to go with a, a computer system components of a computer system we would uh, finally control okay. right so uh, at a glance of uh, the second part of today's class we would go with the advantages and disadvantages of computers next uh, we will identify the similarities between a human and a computer and then we will identify the difference between a human and a computer uh, we would go in detail with the basic uh, computer system and what are the components that are available with the computer system. With the case of uh, 
the advantages of a computer in terms of the speed. Uh, you know, you, uh, everybody knows that a computer can process within seconds. Okay, right. Uh, uh, even with the case of uh, milliseconds, 10 to the minus 3 seconds or maybe microseconds or maybe in nanoseconds, a computer can perform uh, actions of a human uh, very fast. Okay, So you can consider computers as super fast machines and uh, so that you can process millions of instructions within a second. Okay, right? So thousands of instructions uh, it can be processed within a second and uh, you know, uh, several complex machines can uh, execute uh, millions of instructions per second. And in the case of accuracy, computers are very accurate even. They are capable of handling uh, several hundreds of instructions without error. So you can see it is a very accurate, super fast machine and they do not compute mistakes just like a human being. For example, uh, in the case of a human being, human beings tend to make errors when they, when they get tired, uh, maybe their uh, the body doesn't cope up with the standards. But uh, the computer doesn't get tired, only thinking how to charge your computer. And they perform each and every calculation with the same accuracy. And uh, in terms of efficiency, efficiency of the computer doesn't decrease with, with age. Like uh, for example, if uh, a human being uh, gets old by maybe 40 years or maybe 50 years or maybe 60 years, their uh, physical capability, mental capability tends to decrease. But uh, computers doesn't decrease with age, only thing you should uh, charge uh, it very clearly and you should update it, you should upgrade the computer. So computers can perform repeated tasks with the same efficiency any number of times. So uh, computer doesn't get exhausted. Okay? So even if you have to execute millions of instructions, then uh, it uh, executes with the same speed and efficiency without any exhaustion. With the case of storage uh, capability, computers uh, are capable of storing, uh, storing large millions of data in the storage uh, devices. So these devices, uh, they occupy very less space and uh, they are able to store, you know, millions of information in condensed forms. Like uh, it, is, it is going to categorize the information and it is going to store millions of information. Even with the case of uh, floppy disks or maybe magnetic tapes or maybe hard disks or maybe CDs, the data is stored uh, in these devices. For example, in the computer, you will have like limited storage. For example, like uh, 100 GB of data or maybe 200 GB of data. And after that, you can go with hard disks. But still, you can uh, uh, store uh, millions of data <coughs> and it can be retrieved and reused when and uh, even I require. In the case of versatility, uh, it is not only capable of performing complex mathematical tasks but also non numerical operations, even as I already mentioned in the previous uh, uh, topics. It is capable of doing the airline reservations, electricity bills, database management, maintaining the data, you know, centralized coordinated system. Uh, computer is very versatile. And in the case of limitations of computers, the disadvantage of computer, a computer cannot think on its own because uh, it doesn't have its own brain. So only if you program, then uh, it is going to perform some actions. It can execute only the jobs which is having like a finite set of instructions. It, and uh, also the instructions should be clearly defined. Only then it will process the uh, input and it will be producing the output. And computer doesn't learn from prior previous experience because. Uh, uh, normally, human beings uh, we, we tend to you know memorize. Okay, we are getting some uh, real life uh, situation at uh, age uh, ten. Now we are going to apply the same. So computers do not learn from previous experience, or uh, they do not come at a conclusion uh, through the intermediate steps. Okay. So, however, the impact of computers on today's society is phenomenal, and uh, you cannot uh, imagine a life without computers today, or maybe internet. Today. Now we are going to identify the uh, similarities between a human and a computer and then we are going to see the difference between a human and a computer. So computer as you all know it's very effective and efficient machine. Several uh, activities can be performed within seconds or maybe minutes or otherwise uh, within several days it is performing naturally. Okay. So whether when it comes when it concerns to accuracy or maybe completing tasks, the computer is very much faster, it's very much accurate. So this is actually the similarities between a human and a computer. So just like a human has ears or maybe nose or maybe eyes, 
a computer has input devices, for example, like keyboard, or maybe scanning a particular information using a scanner, uh, you have a screen, you have mouse even to get the information. So just like we remember things, computer stores information as storage devices with using magnetic disks, magnetic tapes, or maybe hard disks even. And uh, we recollect uh, certain information as required, but a uh, computer also retrieves information, get the uh, uh, you know, information. For example, in the case of computer, we try to search a particular information or particular data or maybe a particular file, then it searches and uh, gets you the results. We express ourselves by speech, we are writing, and computer, it expresses through screen, okay, it has a, a digital coder or maybe digital uh, software tools that are available, and you can experience printouts whenever we call it as output. When we watch, or maybe when we hear, or maybe when we learn certain things, and we are going to analyze, same way a computer can analyze information and draw conclusion with the help of various softwares, various applications, various tools that are available. And uh, a human can actually has a place where we store and analyze where, where what we call it to be the human brain or maybe the heart. And similarly, a computer uses uh, a storage device or maybe a main heart called the CPU. This CPU, you call it to be the central processing unit where it actually analyzes the information. So once again, we are going to go with the uh, similarities and differences between the human and computer. A computer has uh, storage uh, devices uh, like uh, floppies or maybe uh, hard disks uh, even, uh, compact disks even to store and retrieve information. But the uh, only thing is that computer doesn't have emotions, okay? it doesn't have feelings. Like uh, for example, if uh, a near one or maybe a dear one is feeling sick, then we will have some emotions. For example, if our friend is not, uh, uh, is very sad, then we will have some emotions. But a computer doesn't have any emotion. Okay? So it does not understand meaning beyond words. It cannot read between the lines like a human being. We learn many things unknowingly and certain things knowingly, but a computer uh, doesn't have this information. Only thing it has to be fed, it has to be taught, it has to be processed, and every now and then, only then it uh, it will understand uh, the things or maybe the instructions. Next, we are going to go with the computer system, a normal uh, computer system. So, uh, if you can identify the system, uh, it is nothing but uh, a series of uh, instructions. So, uh, you have like uh, uh, several integrated parts that are designed to achieve a common objective. So, a system is nothing but a centralized application where uh, you get access uh, to the information and you are going to integrate it uh, to achieve a common objective. It can be one element or it can be more than uh, my, uh, no, no multiple elements even. Every element is going to perform a specific function where all the elements are logically related and uh, controlled in the same way so as to achieve the goal. So if you take in the case of a computer system, it has CPU, central processing unit, you will have input device, you will have output device and you will have storage device. So in my future lectures, I will be going with the, the, now the input device and output devices and then we will go with primary storage devices and the secondary storage devices. So each of these units uh, it would be performing a specific task. So you can say that uh, none of them can work independently on their own. Okay, only thing you have to process, you have to feed, you have to input the data, and they are logically related and uh, controlled to achieve a specific goal. Okay. <coughs> so only thing if you have like integration, then uh, you can say it is a complete computer system. So, in the case of components of a, a computer system, so the basic uh, uh, components uh, you have, uh, you know, the input uh, unit, central processing unit, and then you have the output unit. So, this is actually the block diagram or the schematic diagram of a central processing unit. You have the input unit, you have the CPU, 
very how the memory in your memory unit arithmetic logic unit control unit okay so this is uh, actually the central processing unit where uh, you have the data flow or maybe the data information and uh, control flow or control information takes place in cpu and then you get the output so in the memory unit you will have like uh, storage devices uh, you store the information in arithmetic logic unit you process the arithmetic and logical functions that are available like uh, what you discussed uh, in the earlier classes with the uh, addition subtraction multiplication division and then logical operations maybe compare uh, and or not operation and then you control the information and then you are going to process the information to the outputs With the case of input unit, uh, it's uh, nothing but input devices. We are going to feed the programs, the data, or maybe the information. So in the input unit, we are going to connect the external environment with the computer system. So uh, input uh, devices uh, actually it's a means of communication between the user and the computer system. So uh, input device it's a it's a intermediate between uh, a user and a computer system. Through input devices, you are going to enter the information. For example, you can use the keyboard to enter the information, or maybe the floppy disks to feed the information, or maybe the mouse to actually track, microphone to actually speak where you know, the information is being given, or maybe a light pen where you are going to show the information, or maybe the joystick where you are going to you know the feed the data, or maybe the magnetic tapes as well where uh, the information can be feed it or maybe so the way in which the data is being fed is uh, different. So uh, uh, processing is same, but uh, how we feed the information or how we input the information differs. So a computer can accept data only in a specific form. So you can use like different forms, but it accepts only a specific form. So as I already mentioned, uh, a computer can understand a machine level language uh, program. So you have to feed it in a particular form. So you can take several forms but you should feed it in a particular form. So these uh, input de devices, they transfer the data that is uh, fed to them and it can process them and uh, it, it can produce the output via the computer. So these devices are a means of communication and uh, it is uh, going to act as an intermediator between the user and a computer system. So this is the function of a normal input device. So we are going to continue with the case of the function of input unit. So you can see uh, that the uh, input unit acts as an uh, interface between a user and a computer. <coughs> so uh, the input unit uh, actually accepts the information in digital form or maybe the program scheme and you are going to convert this uh, data into a machine level program or maybe into a part where the computer can accept. As I have already told you, computer can ac accept only in one particular form and uh, you have to process this uh, converted data into to the computer for further processing so after further processing you get the output next we would go with the cpu central processing unit so you can say it has the brain or maybe the brain of the computer or maybe the motherboard so the central processing unit is made up of three parts you have the control unit alu arithmetic logic unit and then you have the primary storage unit. So in the primary storage unit, you have the uh, the storage device. Okay. So you have the control unit, ALU, and then the primary storage unit. In the case of control unit, you are going to control several operations of the entire computer system. So you are going to get the instructions from the programs. You are going to store it in the primary storage unit. And uh, you are going to interpret these instructions as uh, subsequently uh, directs uh, in order to execute the instructions. So we are going to control the information in the primary storage unit. We are going to interpret and you are going to execute the instructions. Also, it, ha it serves as a very powerful management and coordination unit for the entire company system. So entire operations, you can uh, call it to be a manager. We are, we are going to call it as a coordinator while you control all the operations within a single unit. With the case of ALU, as I have already mentioned, it is going to execute the instructions and it is going to perform calculations and it is going to make very important decisions. May it be simple decisions or maybe complex decisions. 
uh, that is decision maker is the arithmetic logical unit. So the data is uh, stored in the primary storage unit and then it is transferred to ALU where important decisions or maybe calculations are performed in ALU. So data can be moved from the primary storage to the arithmetic logic unit several number of times before the processing is complete. So you can perform addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, logical operations and or not and storage of information in the primary storage, everything is done over here and after that it goes for the processing for CPU. After the complete, uh, I mean the complete, the completion, the results are actually uh, sent to the uh, output storage section and then the output is actually displayed using the output devices. In the case of primary storage unit, uh, it is uh, called as the main memory. So before the actual processing, we have to feed the instructions in this main memory through the input uh, units. So here the data which is to be output from the computer is temporarily stored in the primary memory. So before processing all these instructions, you have to feed it into this uh, uh, the primary memory. So where the intermediate results of the calculations are stored. For example, let us take in the case, uh, okay, uh, like uh, 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 maybe uh, 7, uh, sorry, 5 plus 2 plus 2 into 4 plus 3 uh, divided by 1. Let us take in this case. So, for the first case, uh, 5 plus 2 it is going to store. And then the second case with 3 into 4 it is going to store. And then 3 divided by 1 it is going to store. So, every intermediate results of the calculations are being stored and then only it is going to process and it is going to give the final result. Okay. So, in the case of main memory, it has a storage uh, section which holds the computer programs during this execution. So, in the case of primary storage unit, you are going to temporarily store it and you are going to process the result and you are going to uh, get the output at the output device. So, these are the functions of the primary uh, storage unit. So, what it does is uh, it is going to uh, store the data and programs using the actual processing. Okay. So, the information is being stored and uh, the programs are, are even stored for the actual processing. And what we are going to do, we are going to process the temporary results of the intermediate processing and uh, we are going to store the executable results temporarily. That's where uh, the primary storage unit acts. So, you are going to store the information, maybe the data or maybe the programs and you are going to get the temporary results out of the intermediate processing and then you are going to execute it and you are going to store the execution results. Finally, you have the output unit. You are going to get the results, uh, the computations of the outside world. So, after getting the results, because it is in the maybe the binary form or maybe the computer understandable form, what you have to do is you have to convert these results into human readable form and you are going to supply it to the users. So normally like uh, in the case of printers or maybe plotters or maybe display screens, magnetic discs, magnetic tape drives, okay, optical devices, you are going to go with the uh, uh, output uh, devices where you are going to process the results in a human readable form and you are going to supply it to the users. So this is the function of the output in the case of the several computer devices.